Getting to know Option XB10. That's the subject for today's episode of Checkup with Dr. Chuck. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Dr. Chuck with another refrigerant checkup. Today I want to talk about a very popular refrigerant, Option XP10, ASHRAE designation R513A. So I want to talk a little bit about what 513A is, uh, then I'll cover some of its properties, the applications where it's used, and some of the reasons why we think it's a real important product helping us transition to lower GWP uh, refrigerants into the future. So R513A is an azeotropic blend. We know that by the 500 series designation. So it's a mixture of R134A and R1234YF, but since it's an azeotrope, it has no glide to worry about. Its vapor and liquid compositions are gonna be the same, uh, making it uh, perfect to use in flooded evaporators. It's also an A1 refrigerant, which means it's low toxicity and non-flammable. So even though it has some YF in there, which is an A2L component, it's balanced out by the 134A to make it non-flammable so it can be used in equipment uh, designed for 513. It can also be used in equipment designed for 134A, which I'll talk about. So 513A looks a lot like 134A uh, if you look at its physical properties. Um, I'm going to put a chart up here of the pressure temperature curve of 1234YF and uh, R134A. And you can see how closely those lines lie on top of each other. And so when we make a mixture of the two, again, it's going to have very, very similar pressure temperature properties. And in fact, all the properties are very, very similar when you're looking at 513A compared to uh, 134A, which gets us into some of the applications where it's been used. Uh, it's a direct replacement for 134A and a lot of equipment that was designed based on 134A and OEMs wanted to transition and have a lower GWP offering going from 1200, uh, you know, to the less than uh, 750 needed for air conditioning and some of the proposed regulations. So a 134A chiller can easily be adapted and performs very, very similar uh, when it's charged with 513A. Um, there have been a lot of retrofits of those type of systems, um, but anywhere 134A is used, it's a good candidate for putting in uh, 513A in the, in the future. The, uh, the transition out of 134A and 134A CO2 cascade systems, we've converted a lot of those over to 513A CO2 systems. It's a great way to maintain your performance, maintain all the good uh, benefits you get from those type of systems, but getting it to run on a refrigerant with a lower GWP, a lower climate impact. A lot of medium temperature uh, standalone refrigeration equipment uh, formerly uh, charged with 134A is now being designed with 513 or XP10. Um, and it's just not medium temperature. Uh, I'm going to put some boiling points up here and you can see there's a little bit of an advantage to 513 over 134A with a lower boiling point. Uh, and we are using it quite commonly in uh, uh, low temperature applications, particularly ice rinks. There's a number of equipment manufacturers out there have very, very efficient uh, ice rink chillers that operate down in the, uh, you know, zero degree uh, F evaporator range and uh, use 513A. It's a, it's a good solution for those type of applications. And finally, some of the new really innovative architectures in commercial refrigeration like the uh, micro distributed scroll technology uh, that Emerson is, uh, has been talking about a little bit. Uh, 513A is a perfect candidate for that. And we expect to see a lot of that type of systems coming out in supermarkets, commercial or fridge designs uh, of the future. And finally, one of the real reasons I'm so bullish on 513A or XP10 is because it provides a really nice glide path from traditional legacy HFC refrigerants like 134A to convert over because it's non-flammable to 513A and then take another step to an A2L, very low GWP, GWP less than 1, 1234YF. These refrigerants, these uh, compounds, 134A, YF, and the mixture of them, which is 513, kind of let you step through a GWP reduction uh, in a very orderly 
transition. So you can go a big step down in GWP and say in the same design basis with the same flammability characteristics. And then when you're ready to move to an A2L to the lowest possible GWP, you can move there as long as the uh, A2L characteristics are accounted for and, and mitigated. So we see that as a nice pathway for designers to move from where we are today with 134A, ultimately to GWPs less than one with HFOs like 1234YF. So that's a little bit of background on uh, XP10. You should be seeing more and more of it out there. It's a very popular refrigerant. It's growing in use. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please reach out to our uh, technical engineering team. I'll put the number there for our tech-to-tech -tech support line. And again, Option.com has a lot of the basic refrigerant information on XP10 and our other products. And as always, we'll be glad to, uh, to assist you and get you any information you need as you start to adopt and use these refrigerants. So again, thanks for uh, stopping by this uh, episode of the checkup. Um, if you have any ideas or any questions you want me to address, feel free to reach out to me. I'll put my email down here at the bottom. And again, please, if you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any episodes. And we'll be talking to you soon. Thanks again.